Hey, healthy living friends. This episode comes from my Facebook live posts. I take the audio from the video and create a podcast for you to listen to and learn from. If you find value in this information, share it with a friend. If you visit Facebook, leave a comment or two. Together, we can help more people live healthier lives. Okay, now on to the show. Hey guys, Eric Sue here. Welcome to another episode of Healthy Living with Eric Sue. We have an outstanding personal trainer with us today. His name is Byron Dice. We'll be talking about the madness methods and system towards healthier living. So without any delay, let me introduce you all to Byron. Byron, are you ready to make it happen? Yes, I'm ready. Byron, Byron's goal is to educate and inspire communities to improve their quality of life by creating a blueprint for success. Health and fitness are his passion and he wants to accompany athletes along their journey to better health and performance. Byron was destined for a love of health and fitness from an early age, being the son of an Olympic runner. He spent his childhood playing outdoors and getting involved in as many sports as possible. Byron settled into his athletic niche when he entered high school, dedicating his focus on football and weightlifting where he completed at a high level. He then spent his freshman year as a walk-on with the University of Florida football team until he decided he wanted to focus his energy on school and business. Byron has spent his last six years in the fitness field. Byron, that was just a little bit about who you are. Can you share with our audience a little bit more on how you got started? Yeah, of course. Um, so. Uh like I said in the bio, uh, I've always been around health and fitness. You know, growing up, uh, my dad was very active, uh, and I knew uh, growing, uh, growing to be older and, and, and getting into my professional life that uh, I would eventually do something uh, in the health and fitness field. Uh, now, what I didn't really know, uh, so a, a, along the way, uh, kind of figured that out, right? So I had two main loves from an education standpoint. Uh, business was one of my loves, and, and then health and fitness was the other. So. Um, uh, a lot of stuff happened along the way, but uh, ultimately it landed uh, where I'm at right now, which is which is at Blueprint Fitness, which is uh, a class-based gym uh, where we have personal training, we have CrossFit, we have boot camps, uh, you name it, we have a lot of it uh, here. So um, it was a, it was a journey that wasn't super linear, uh, which which no journey really is, um, but uh, we all, we ended up in the right place. Awesome, very good. Now our audience loves this answer, and it's a really fun question. What's one cool or unique fact about yourself? Oh man, uh, let's see. <laughs> um, I haven't cut my beard <sighs> in over a year and a half. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. It looks, it looks pretty good, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. That's the first person I think who has that unique fact. <laughs> so that's great. Um, so let's dive into this, Byron. We we had a pre-show conversation and we we talked about this. Um, madness method and system I think you mentioned um, can you help our audience understand it and uh, how do you describe it to people yeah basically um, you know so so my, my my traditional education background was in business right so I got, got my degree in business and then uh, all of my extracurricular stuff uh, was in health and fitness right so to marry the two worlds uh, to make my, my, my fitness health and fitness business dream come true um, you know, I had to pull from both sciences, right? So uh, for us to make a really, you know, successful and gym from the standpoint of being able to positively influence as many people as we could, uh, we had to create systems, right? So we call it, we call it the, the, the madness methods, um, you know, and, and, and all of those systems on the back end that you know, create a lot of engagement with the members, uh, create a lot of uh, results from a health and fitness standpoint. Um, so that's a, that's a general rundown uh, of what that's like. So, so from your experience in, in implementing this, what have you noticed? What is it that uh, uh, you could share with us and that maybe some of the audience can actually take home and, and, and practice as well? Man, uh, first and foremost, uh, the, the thing that has to go in front of all of the systems is uh, caring, right? So um, it can be the best system in the world. You can have the you know, the, the most qualified coaches in the world, Sammy. Um, but without caring, you know, the, the, the systems don't come to fruition, right? So that's first and foremost is you have to care, right? And, and, and that's not something that can be taught. 
that's most of the time something uh, that people innately do, right? right? From a, from, a, uh, from a staff standpoint, uh, that's what we look for first and foremost. Like, do you care? Right? Do, does, does, does everything matter to you? Um, so that's number one. Uh, number two is that, you know, the systems have to be created to engage uh, people, right? And that engagement has to be um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis from a coach to athlete, uh, but it's also got to be in a group setting, right? How do I engage the entire community or the entire class at one time? Um, and then number three, you know, you have to execute the plan, right? So um, a, a plan can be perfect, but if it's not followed consistently, uh, then uh, that plan never uh, comes to the results that you want. So I would say those are the, those are the three main things that we've, we've, we've seen over this process. Uh, but uh, with, with that being said, yeah. uh, we always talk about this always in, in business, but we also talk about this in workouts, right? So if we're, if we're going to do like this 20 minute AMRAP with, mm -hmm. you know, pull ups and deadlifts and, you know, running, whatever, you know, you, you go into it with a plan, right? So you, you, you make the, this make this schema in your head of like, okay, this is how I'm going to attack this workout. But you always have to know that that plan could blow up in your face at any moment. Right. Yeah. And you have to be flexible enough um, to adjust to that. So as proactive as you are on the front end, uh, you have to be reactive at the same time. Sure. Absolutely. Um, your clients know this and they breathe this. Um, what kind of reactions do you get from them? Oh man, it's awesome. You know, so, you know, we're, we're over communicators here uh, at the gym, all of the coaches, um, all of all of the staff are over communicators. So um, everybody's uh, is, is super comfortable coming to us uh, with feedback, whether it's good or bad, uh, because they know we're not going to react in a way uh, that's super emotional, we're going to we're going we're gonna to analyze it. And we're going to say, you know, does this, does this help the gym out, right? Does this improve the community and, and the environment that that people are in? So um, you know, the, the, the athletes and everybody inside the gym, um, know this and, and we, we portray this on a regular basis so that it is nice, open communication. Yeah. Um, so like, like, like any good relationship, uh, the open communication is key. Perfect. Perfect. Um, we have, um, some listeners who are a little confused about how to get started with health and wellness. They're not sure how to approach fitness. Um, how can they apply some of the methods that you've developed? Oh man. Yeah. So uh, I would say first and foremost is, is, is you make the decision, right. And, um, you know, before you even step foot in a gym or sign up for a gym, do your research on the back end, right? So, uh, for something to be sustainable for me and for, for everybody in the gym, uh, two things have to happen. One, it has to be fun, right? I have, I, I have to enjoy it. Uh, but two, uh, it has to breed results, right? So I, I want to do something that's fun, but I also want to do something that's going to get to my end goal. So uh, doing your research on the back end, um, you know, looking at different class structures or you know different facilities, uh, doing some of that initial research is is a big thing because uh, you know we talk about time all the time and we can't get time back. So if I spend that time on the front end doing my research at home, I'm gonna going to save a lot of time from going to, you know, call it 10 different gyms uh, that I'm vetting out versus, you know, narrowing it down on the back end and going to three different gyms. Uh, so I would say that's, that's number one. Uh, number two is, is, is to dive in, right? Yeah. And, and if you dive in and when you pick a gym, um, be open-minded uh, because, you know, if you're going to, uh, you're going to do something, you're, you're, you're asking for an expert's help, right? So, if you go and you find these cool coaches, you find this cool gym, you know, know that they're there to help you um, and, and keep an open mind throughout that process. Um, and then uh, last but not least, you got to work hard, right? So there, there's, there is no, no magic pill um, to getting in the best shape of your life. Um, so, so along with the, the uh, finding the right place and the right fit for you, uh, you have to put in the consistent work uh, on a regular basis. Yeah, I keep telling and reminding my clients that I can only help you um, figure out the plan, but I can't execute it for you. Yes, <laughs> and absolutely. And the effort is going absolutely. to be the, the outcome. The effort is, is the be key. So I agree with all three of those points. What, what do you say to those who 
are, are not too sure about maybe your facility or some other facility, what, what could you say, you know, you said just dive in, but, but what is it that, that they need to know? Or what is it that they have to do to, to be, sh be comfortable? Yeah, I mean, so, so I'm, I'm big on first impressions, right? So um, when you walk into a gym or you walk into, um, you, you walk in to meet with a personal trainer, um, that, that first five minutes is huge, right? Do you feel comfortable after that first five minutes? Do you feel like the person uh, cares about what you are doing, you know, about what, what your mission or what your why is? Um, and, and if you feel that within the first five minutes, you're probably in a pretty good space, good place. Um, you know, if, if you walk in and, and you, it, it feels kind of cold, it doesn't feel welcoming, um, you know, you, you get this, you know, kind of, for, for lack of a better term, confrontational feeling. Um, <laughs> You know, it's, it's probably not going to be the right fit. So yeah. um, ultimately, as, as, a, as a personal trainer, you know, and a fitness professional, we, we, have, we have huge power, right? We have huge power over the human body, right? So um, the barriers to entry are small into the fitness industry. Um, so know that you have a big pool of people to pull from. So if right off the bat, you don't feel comfortable with that person, call that your first red flag um, and, uh, and go on to step two. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. It's that connection I hear all the time that that um, even in anything I do personally, if I don't find that that connection with someone that I'm going to be working with, there's not going to be a, a, a long lasting relationship. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so uh, how do you how do you build that relationship over there at your facility and, and maybe uh, w what you guys have learned you could share with the audience? Yeah, I mean, uh, member engagement is huge to us. Um, so, you know, one of the things that we did uh, very early was we used social media, right? So how do, how do we uh, constantly engage the, the membership base with coaches, with all the other athletes? You know, because if people come at 6 a.m. on a regular basis, they're never going to see the person who comes at 6 p.m. So um, how do we keep that engagement high? So the first thing we did was we created just a members-only Facebook group. Uh, right where everything from athlete highlights to uh, highlighting programs that are going on in the gym to uh, different outings that people are going to do um, on a regular basis, all of that stuff goes on there. So it's this this is really interactive, real time system um, that that people become engaged. Uh, so that's that's number one. Uh, number two, I would say is, is is all of the social events, right? So. Um, from, from a calendar standpoint, we try to plan out the calendar year uh, a year in advance. Um, that calendar, of course, is flexible. Um, but uh, we, we try to plan things like chili cook-offs, uh, which is coming up this Friday, uh, actually. Um, holiday parties, uh, throwdowns, where people from all different times of the day who usually come in different times uh, get to come together and we partner them up. Um, uh, blueprint nights out, where we, we after a a competition that we go to as a group we get together and hang out um, so those are just a few of the, the engagement techniques or, or, or the engagement practices that we do on a regular basis to kind of uh, make this, this this community a whole I, I can see like um, our audience members going to their facility wherever they go and it's fine that they may not be going to your place but it'd be great if they go to your place but finding that community and finding that those special engagements that you're talking about, I think that would be uh, very beneficial for them, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you see yourself um, doing anything above and beyond um, and adding more value to your clients? How do you do that? Oh man, you know, in, in, you know, a traditional business book would call this the wow, right? Um, and and, and the, the theory of under promising and over performing. Uh, and we're we're kind of on the opposite spectrum of that, where we like we like to promise a lot, but we try we try to deliver even more, uh, right? So uh, when when people come into the gym, you know, I think think right off the back, you know, if if it's somebody who hasn't done a ton of research beforehand, they're like, oh, okay, I'm coming to this you know CrossFit or group fitness gym, uh, and I'm I'm just I'm gonna get a good workout, and and you know I I may meet a couple people, and then I'm gonna leave, and then I'm gonna go home, right? And then they, they end up getting engulfed uh, in the community, right? So um, I, I would say that, say the biggest wow factors um, are that community, right? And, and, and everything that's, that's programmed into uh, forced interaction in workouts with uh, partner warmups and partner cool downs or team workouts, uh, max out days, uh, all of that stuff is kind of programmed 
so that that maximum interaction happens, you know, so we like to be, you know, the best part of people's day, right? You, you've, you've heard that saying multiple times and, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's something that we, we pride ourselves on. Um, and, and, you know, we want people to feel super comfortable and, and want to come here. Um, so I would say that's, that's the biggest wow factor is, is just the people, um, the people in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really believe in all that because without that, fitness can be boring. Fitness can Absolutely. be a little bit of a, uh, a long journey, not fun, but long. And uh, yeah. we want to keep them engaged and obviously inspire them to continue. So that's always important. I agree. Um, one other thing that I think that you had shared with me was like uh, the systems that you, you've created and, and maybe that can translate into the system that people develop for themselves. Did you go over that or can you go over that a little bit more? Yeah. Uh you have any any specific systems, you Mark? Any any specific uh, maybe daily systems? routines? Say that again. Sorry, any I didn't hear that. Daily routines. Eric. Daily routines that somebody could implement. Oh man, yeah. So it's, this is this is a funny question. So uh, you know, we kind of touched on this very briefly at the beginning, where where you know we think time is so important, right? You yeah. know, people people are always go 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 um, on the go. They need to get in. They need to get out, right? So um, <laughs> one of the first first systems that we talk about when um, a, a new coach comes in. So say we're hiring a new coach is, is the, the, the first, you know, official meeting is about time management, right? And how do we manage our time? Because, um, you know, f- when we break it down and there, there are, you know, hundreds of hours during the, during the week and, and I need somebody to dedicate three, three to five hours to gym time. Right. Um, so we talk about time management on a regular basis. So, uh, just, just having that plan, right. And, and planning in advance, you know, so if it's if it's Sunday night and I know what's going on uh, the entire week, I'm going to try and plan those three to five workouts uh, in times that I'm going to go um, to to kind of make a system uh, for me to uh, be consistent in the gym. So that I would I would say is number one, right? Where where the that plan of attack has to happen at the beginning of the week um, versus kind of flying by the seat of your pants. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree with planning to win versus if you you don't plan you plan to fail right yes absolutely and um what 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 other um pieces of advice can you share with our audience regarding how to keep motivated or self-motivated maybe yeah absolutely so uh you know uh goals have to happen on a regular basis right and uh in in health and fitness you know the, the there are infinite infinite uh things that we can do with the human body right whether it's you know, working up and getting stronger on a barbell lift, like a back squat, a deadlift, overhead squat, front squat, uh, you name it, uh, whether it's learning a new skill, like a uh, butterfly pull-up or a kipping pull-up, uh, whether it's losing a certain body fat percentage, you know, trying to uh, you know, decrease your body weight by 10 pounds, you know, there's, there are infinite possibilities, right? Um, so, creating goals on a regular basis and, and then implementing systems that kind of assess those goals is a huge thing. Um, so, uh, just know that throughout your lifetime, throughout your health and fitness lifetime, that, that you're going to have, you know, hundreds of goals, hundreds of goals and, and to pick one, uh, maximum, maximum two at a time to focus on, knock those bad boys out, uh, and then reassess and then make some new goals. So, um, you know, in, in order for, for it to be sustainable, again, like I said, it's got to be fun, but there's also got to be results, right? So um, I need to be able to measure those results um, and goals come first. Yeah. Recently, I was talking to someone about uh, getting fast wins for the person and yeah. getting something um, within a few days versus a few months or even weeks. And, and uh, when I talk about these wins, I'm talking about uh, doing something consistently for two days. That's a win. Right. Absolutely. And so yep. um, reinforcing those little small wins, I think they can add up and, and continue on. So I think you guys talk about that or at least uh, allude to that point. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, I think that's a really good point you make, Eric, is that, um, you know, that like, like goals don't have to be this huge, like I want to back squat, you know, two times my body weight. Right. Which is a huge goal. You know, it may may take years to get to um, something something along the line of a frequency goal, like for, for, you know, if that's your, that's your, that's your BHAG, if that's your big, yeah. hairy, audacious goal, you know, before that needs to happen, you know, I need to make a goal of, okay, I'm going to dedicate two of my workout days to back squatting. 
um, a week, you know, and, and, and being able to do that consistently is going to get you to that goal. Um, but there are a lot of steps along the way that have to have to happen to get to that big goal. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a that's a really good point you make yeah, uh, with, with with the fast successes that have to happen in order to get to that long one. For sure. For sure. Um, I know that you guys do some, I think, uh, special events and, and stuff like that. Can you go into a few of those? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the ones that we did, you know, when we first when we first got into uh, the, 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 the gym scene, so to speak, you know, we're we're huge on programming, right? You know, we program the entire gym. Uh, I think I think it's a lost art. Is is the art of programming is is, is lost art? There's there's so many resources to outsource it, um, so on and so forth. But we're really really big on on keeping programming in house because it caters to the specific clientele in general. So uh, one of the things we do on a regular basis is when we program, you know, we we program to peak. We program to peak in certain weeks, uh, whether we're working on, you know. Uh, a deadlift or working on an overhead squat. So uh, one of one of our one of our most fun events is what we call deadlift and donuts, right? Mm. So it's 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 kind of like an oxymoron, right? Mm. The, the gym and donuts does, doesn't go together. Uh, but you know, every twice a year we get together um, after uh, a cycle goes on where we're working on deadlifts, right? And, and the goal is to hit a max deadlift at the end of these cycles. Um, and we get together on a Saturday. Um, everybody has an entry fee of two donuts, uh, so they, they bring it in and, and we share donuts and coffee after everybody everybody maxes out on on deadlifts. So that's that's a real fun event. That's a, that's an in house one that, that goes on on a regular basis. Um, and then we do a lot of out house ones where um, you know whether they're 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 exercise based. So you know we usually hit two or three obstacle races a year: Spartan race, Savage race, uh, Battle Frog. Um, Random, well, not random, but uh, local CrossFit competitions, uh, and then we have uh, what we call Blueprint Nights Out, where you know we'll go meet at a restaurant and just hang out, have fun. Yeah, I, I think that uh, you're doing a lot of things. You're inspiring, you're encouraging, you're building community, um, and making fitness a uh, part of life versus just a, uh, a chore per day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's so cool. That's awesome. Um, kind of getting to the end of the uh, podcast here byron you've been really great really appreciate it um want to pick your brain a little bit and ask if um you could share with our audience just basic three fitness tips or wellness um uh advice something like that to um share with our audience yeah absolutely uh number one is to find a buddy right find somebody who is going to hold you accountable uh, on a regular basis now that buddy doesn't have to be somebody uh, that goes to the same gym as you. It can be your brother. It can be your sister. It can be your best friend. Uh, it can be it can be your mother. It can be your father. Uh, but find somebody who's going to hold you accountable. Who who you kind of feed off of each other. Uh, talk about your workouts. Talk about your struggles. Talk about your successes. Uh, find a buddy because that's that's going to help you out a lot. Uh, especially if you're going into a gym uh, for the first time uh, and 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 you don't know a ton of people. Right. Knowing having somebody on your side that you already know. Um, informed about what you're doing uh, and then kind of helping you along the ways is, is, is a, it's going to be a big key to you sustaining that bad boy. Yeah. Um, I would say number two is to, uh, to always make goals, right? So, uh, going into, going into something blind, uh, is, 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 is a course of action that sometimes breeds results, but, uh, there are, there are better ways to do it and, and finding a goal, uh, to focus on at the beginning is, is a, is a big key. Um, and then number three is to have fun, right? Um, you know, it, 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 it shouldn't feel like a chore. You should find a place that, that feels fun, that has a good community, um, that has a good vibe, has good energy, uh, that you really enjoy going to, because, uh, if it's going to be sustainable, it's gotta be fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know that you're sitting in your fitness center and, uh, I know you want to show it off. So, uh, I don't mind you turning it around or whatever you want to do to, to show it off for a few seconds. Absolutely. Well, you know, behind me is a huge bald eagle with a <laughs> with a Chicago flag, awesome. um, which is kind of funny. Uh, but that's that's kind of when you walk in. I'll kind of walk you through uh, the front of the gym. So this, this scene is is as I walk into the gym. You know, so big open space in the front room. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we'll have multiple classes going on. Uh, so one class will be going on in the front. One will be going on in the back. Bunch of birds. Stability balls, 
Josh is over there getting limber. Coach Selby and Coach Bacon are over there doing some work. Bacon, Bacon, you have anything to say? You got something to say? This is Coach Bacon. What's up? <laughs> But it looks uh, like you got a great facility. It looks like you guys are uh, well, well organized. This, this is this is Cinderella Janelle. Coach Janelle's over here cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Florida Gators, best college in the world. Uh, big rig in the back, bunch of space, some bench marks on the wall, bathroom, showers, other works. Newest addition to peg boards up. Nice. Like fun stuff. But yeah. Very good. Very good. Um, how to get people get a hold of you, Byron? And uh, any last piece of advice? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm easiest e easiest to reach me if you, if you stop by the gym or shoot me an email, uh, Coach Dice at BlueprintFit.com. Um, otherwise, if you, if you give me a call, I'm probably either <laughs> working with a client or, or in a class or, or teaching or doing doing something of this sort. So. Uh, shoot me an email or just stop by. Um, and then last piece of advice would just be, and keep at it. You know, uh, consistency uh, will trump, can trump, trump all. Um, so um, keep at it and uh, you know, reach those goals. Cool, excellent. Um, you, you've inspired me to stop by one day and, and check it cool. out. So um, I look forward to that. Anyhow, awesome, awesome info. I, uh, my audience is gonna love it. Really appreciate it, Byron. I look forward to uh, connecting soon. Have a great day. Yeah. Awesome. You too, Eric. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us today on Healthy Living with Eric Sue. Head over to ericwsue.com for full recaps of every show and Eric's health and wellness blog. Your healthy living life is waiting for you. So stay active and be safe.